to welcome dear students once again into this class of mathematics and in this video we will prove two important terms of sequence the chapter of sequence these are cesaro's theorem and cauchy's theorem and to prove these theorems we will make use of cauchy's first theorem on limits which we have already proved in a previous video so let us let me start with cesaro's theorem so first you will write the statement and then we will move on to the proof. Cicero Sturm says that if A n and B n are two real sequences, two real sequences such that, such that the sequence A n converges to A n the sequence B n converges to B, then a new sequence which is being constructed by using these A n's and B n's, that means the sequence A 1 B n plus A 2 B n minus 1 plus A 3 B n minus 2 plus and so on A n B 1 divided by n, this sequence will converge to A B. So this we are to prove, we are given that A n converges to A and B n converges to B. So let us start with the proof. The proof is not difficult, but we will make use of Cauchy's first theorem on limits to prove these two theorems. So we are given that the sequence A n converges to A and the sequence B n converges to B. This is given to us. Construct a new sequence by using let a n be equal to a plus t n. Now, a n is equal to a plus t n and your a n converges to a. That clearly means that your sequence t n converges to 0. So, this means the sequence t n converges to 0. So, it is a null sequence. It is a 0 sequence. So, wide sequence. And we know that if its real sequence is a null sequence, then its sequence made by its absolute values, modulus, is also a null sequence. So, if mod, uh, Tn converges to 0, then the sequence mod Tn also converges to 0. And here we are going to make use of Cauchy's first theorem on limits. If this sequence converges to 0, using Cauchy's first theorem on limits, we can say that the sequence mod t1 plus mod t2 plus and so on mod tn divided by n also converges to 0. Here we have made use of Cauchy's first theorem on limits. Now, uh, if this converges to 0, by using the definition of convergence, you can say that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists some m belonging to the set of natural numbers such that mod of this mod t1 plus mod t2 plus and so on plus mod tn divided by n minus 0 is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to m. Here I have made use of definition of convergence of a sequence. Now this minus 0. Something minus 0 is the quantity itself. So, this minus 0 is meaningless. Once again, it is positive, positive, positive. Sum of positive quantities is positive divided by a positive number is once again positive. So, this mod is also useless. So, I can remove this mod here too. And now, let us move on to our basic sequence, which we want to show that converges to a, B. And that is the sequence, let it uh, be named as dn. dn means uh, a1 bn plus a2 bn minus 1 plus a3 bn minus 2 plus and so on a n b1 upon n. We have to show that this sequence dn converges to a b. What we will do, we will substitute first values of these a1, a2, an, a3 and an from here. an is equal to a plus tn. So, you will get 
this a1 is from here a plus p1 into bn plus a plus t2 into bn minus 1 plus a plus t3 into bn minus 2 plus and so on plus a plus tn into this b1 divided by n. Now we collect the terms separately. Terms containing a and b, terms containing t and b. So this is a b n, a b n minus 1, a b n minus 2 and so on a b 1. You can take a as common from these terms and you will be left with b1 plus b2 plus and so on bn divided by n. And in the second part you will get t1 bn. So it is t1 bn plus t2 bn minus 1 plus and so on tn b1 divided by n. Once again we are given that bn converges to b bn converges to b and by making use of Cauchy's first theorem on limits we can say that this b1 plus b2 plus bn divided by b n also converges to b so this converges to b and here you have a constant a that means this converges to a b this converges to a b and if this part converges to zero if this part converges to zero the whole right hand side will converge to a b plus zero that means a b and dn converges to a b dn means this sequence converges to a b we will have the proof so what our aim is now to show that this sequence converges to zero for that one thing is to be noted that bn converges to b that means bn is a convergent sequence and we know that every convergent sequence is bounded so bn is also bounded and if bn is bounded bn is bounded there exists some number k real number such that mod of bn is less than k for every n belonging to n here i have used the definition of a bounded sequence and now i am going to prove that this converges to zero for that let me start if I want to show that Zn converges to 0, what I will have to prove? Mod of Zn minus 0 is less than epsilon for every n greater than equal to some m. So that is what our aim is now. Mod of, this is actually your Zn now. So T1 Bn plus T2 Bn minus 1 plus T3 Bn minus 2 plus and so on Tn B1 divided by n minus 0 mod and minus 0 uh, once again make no sense so you can remove it and you can write it now using your knowledge of inequalities that it is less than or equal to 1 by n 1 by n and uh, or you can say uh, mod of t1 plus mod of t2 plus and so on mod of tn uh, uh, actually actually here you have to separate like 1 by n mod of t1 b1 plus mod of t2 bn minus 1 plus and so on mod of tn b1 and this mod of t1 bn can be written as mod of t1 into mod of bn similarly mod of t2 into mod of bn minus 1 mod of tn into mod of b1 and every mod of bn is less than k so this is less than k, this is less than k, this is less than k. So you will have less than 1 by n, less than equal to t1 k plus t2 k plus and so on tn k. And k can be taken out now. So this k, I am going to take it out. I will have here k by n. And this n, I am going to take inside the bracket so this divided by n and this quantity is less than epsilon we have already proved that so this is less than k times epsilon and k times epsilon you can say some epsilon dash for every n greater than or equal to m and that means this minus 0 converges uh, 
this converges to zero because z n minus zero mod is going to be less than epsilon for every n greater than to m. The sequence z n converges to zero, and what is your sequence z n or d n, whatever you want to say, that this sequence converges to your zero. This converges to zero. This converges to a b. So the sum sequence converges to a b. So your sequence d n. Converges to a b plus zero. That means d n converges to a b. And what is your d n? D n is a one b b n plus a two b n minus one plus a three b n minus two plus and so on. A n b n one divided by n. So this sequence converges to a b, and that was required to be proved. So here we have proved one of the two important theorems, that is Cicero's theorem. And now uh, we will prove another important theorem, that is. Cauchy Stone's theorem. So let us see what is Cauchy Stone's theorem. First, we will state the theorem, and then definitely we will move on to the proof. So Cauchy Stone's theorem says that if B n is strictly increasing. Strictly increasing sequence sequence that diverges to infinity diverges to infinity if a n is any sequence a n is any sequence. Such that the sequence a n plus one minus a n divided by b n plus one minus b n converges to L. Then, then the sequence a n upon b n also converges to L. This is the statement of Cauchy's theorem. Here we are given that B n is a strictly increasing sequence which diverges to infinity, and A n is any sequence such that this sequence A n plus one minus A n upon B n plus one minus B n converges to L. Then the sequence we are to show that A n upon B n will also converge to L. And let us move on to the proof. The proof contains two parts. L may be Finite, L may be infinite. So proof is almost similar. So I'll try to take one of the parts for L to be finite. If L is infinite, I think you can check your books, you can see your notes, and you can do the second part at your own. So I'm going to take one part only when L is finite. So when L is finite, let us see what will happen. This sequence a n plus one minus a n upon b n plus one minus b n converges to L. Use the definition of convergence here. That means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists some m one belonging to n such that your mod of a n plus one minus a n over b n plus one minus b n is Less than epsilon, uh, sorry, minus l also. Minus l is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to m one. And this inequality, you can write it as by removing this mod, you can write minus epsilon is less than this. And using l to this inequality, you will get l here. This minus l will be removed, and here you will get. L plus epsilon. Since your sequence B n is strictly increasing, that means B n plus one is greater than B n, or you can say that B n minus plus one minus B n is a positive quantity. So multiplying this inequality throughout by B n plus one minus B n, you will get L minus epsilon into B n plus one minus B n is less than. A n plus one minus a n is less than l plus epsilon into 
bn plus 1 minus bn for every n greater than or equal to m1. Now, you substitute your n to be n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3 and so on up to n plus b and then add these inequalities. So what you will get, first you substitute, uh, replace n by n, you will get the same thing. When you replace your n by n plus 1, you will get L minus epsilon, B n plus 2 minus B n plus 1 is less than A n plus 2 minus A n plus 1 is less than L plus epsilon, B n plus 2 minus B n plus 1. This you will get. Here I am going to remove it because I am substituting the values of n now. Similarly, you will get L minus epsilon b n plus 3 minus b n plus 2 less than a n plus 3 minus a n plus 2 is less than l plus epsilon times b n plus 3 minus b n plus 2 and so on continuing and at the end you substitute your n by n plus p minus 1 and substituting like this you will get and so on l minus epsilon replace this n by n plus p minus 1. So n plus p minus 1 plus 1. My, uh, so 1 will be cancelled. You will get b n plus p b n plus p minus b n plus p minus 1 is less than a n plus p minus a n plus p minus 1 is less than l plus epsilon times b n plus p minus b n plus p minus 1. And now add these all inequalities. Adding vertically L minus epsilon will be common. This and b n plus 1 will be cancelled. b n plus 2 will be cancelled. b n plus 3 will be cancelled. Similarly this will be cancelled. So you will be left with these two terms bn plus b minus bn. The similar concept is going to be here. This cancelled, this is cancelled, this is cancelled, this is cancelled and you will be left with an plus b minus an. Here once again L plus epsilon will be common. This is cancelled, this is cancelled, this is cancelled and so on. This is cancelled and you will be left with bn plus b minus bn. So adding what you are going to get, I am going to change it here. So here you will get b n plus p, b n plus p minus b n. Here you will get a n plus p minus a n. And once again here you will get b n plus p minus b n. So I have added all these inequalities to get this result. This result I have obtained by using the earlier inequalities, adding them vertically. So this is now obtained. And now multiply this inequality throughout by 1 upon b n plus p. What you will get? Here you will get 1. Here you will get 1. And here you will get minus b n upon b n plus p. So this you will get here. Here you will get both terms divided by b n plus p. So a n plus p divided by b n plus p minus a n divided by b n plus p. And on the right hand side you will get 1 minus b n upon b n plus p. So we have multiplied the inequality throughout by this term. And now add this term to this inequality. This term a n upon b n plus p. Add this term to all the parts of the inequality. So the first part you will get here plus a n upon bn plus p, right? 
From here, this portion will be removed because you have added its additive inverse. And on the right hand side, you will get plus a n upon b n plus p. Now keeping n fixed and taking p approaches infinity, the first part that means l minus epsilon. 1 minus bn upon bn plus p plus a n upon b n plus p where it will go keeping n fixed and p approaches infinity as your p approaches infinity this bn plus p will approach to infinity so something upon infinity this portion will converge to 0 1 minus 0 means 1 so here you will get a big 1 so L minus epsilon into 1 means L minus epsilon. Plus, once again, this n is fixed. B n plus p. Since p is approaching towards infinity, B n plus p is a divergence sequence, so it will diverge to infinity. And something upon infinity is once again 0, so this portion will again become 0. So L minus epsilon into 1 plus 0 means L minus epsilon. Similarly, if you talk about this portion, it will go to L plus epsilon on the same lines on the same lines because this will become 0 1 minus 0 is 1 and it will be 0 so L plus epsilon 1 minus 0 plus 0 is L plus epsilon now it converges to L minus epsilon and once again apply the definition of convergence of sequence so that means for every epsilon there exists some m2 or m3 whatever you want to say such that this minus l minus epsilon mod will be less than epsilon or epsilon dash so this minus l plus epsilon is going to be now less than epsilon dash for every n greater than or equal to some m2 and once again remove this mod you will get here minus epsilon dash add this L minus epsilon throughout the inequality so this L minus epsilon is going from here you will get L minus epsilon minus this and here you will get L minus epsilon plus epsilon dash so minus epsilon minus epsilon dash you can name it or term it as epsilon double dash so I am writing here L uh, or let it be like this, no problem. Let it be like this. Now, similarly, from here you will get, uh, and what we want actually, okay, similarly you will get some L minus epsilon plus epsilon double dash, not L minus epsilon, but L plus epsilon now, L plus epsilon plus epsilon double dash is less than L plus epsilon into 1 minus uh, Bn upon Bn plus P plus An upon Bn plus P is less than L minus L plus epsilon plus epsilon double dash for some n greater than or equal to M3. Here I have used the definition of convergence here. Now, I am going to combine these three. One, two, three. L minus epsilon minus epsilon dash is less than this quantity, but this quantity is less than a n plus p upon b n plus p. So, I am directly writing that L minus epsilon minus epsilon dash is less than uh, a n plus p upon b n plus p is less than is less than this quantity but this quantity is less than l plus epsilon plus epsilon double dash for every n greater than or equal to some uh, m triple dash where m triple dash may be maximum of m1 m2 and m3 and now this epsilon epsilon dash you can choose some epsilon double dash 
you can choose sum epsilon double dash such that L minus epsilon double dash is less than this is less than L plus epsilon double dash such epsilon double dash can be chosen and now since this is true for every m greater than or equal to m so you can leave p from here also because it is true for all n greater than or equal to m triple dash and now add minus l to this inequality so this my l will be removed here you will get minus l and this l will be removed and now convert it into the modulus inequality so what you are going to get that mod of this is less than epsilon for every n greater than equal to m triple dash and look at the beauty of mathematics now this is the definition of convergence now and from here what you get that the sequence a n upon b n converges to l what we wanted to show that a n upon b n converges to l so here i have proved the part where l is finite so i think you will be able to solve the other part when l is infinite so try yourself and you will be able to do that so we have proved two theorems today cesarov theorem and cauchy stokes theorem in the next video we will have some more theorems till then thank you thank you once again